Hi guys, my name is Tiffany and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I have another upcycle by Little Toe for you today where I take old forgotten items and give them a new life. If you watched my last video, I did a thrift flip challenge with Addie Gunnan of Well Left Clothing where I made this dress, but I had a ton of fabric left over and I am all about sustainability on my channel, so I didn't want to waste that fabric. While this technically isn't a challenge video, I am going to be using the items that Addie sent me, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I turned this dress and this dress into this dress. So let's get started. Here is a reminder of what Addie sent me. This is the first dress and I used most of it in my last upcycle, but I saved the collar of this dress, which I really want to feature. Next up is this yellow linen dress. I only used a little bit of this in my last upcycle, so I'll be using a majority of this fabric to create the new dress. Along with the two dresses, she also sent me the sage green skirt. If you watched my last video, I had mentioned that I wanted to reuse this collar in this upcycle, so here are some of my inspo photos. I definitely want to make a mini dress with puff sleeves to go with the collar, and I'm going to start with the skirt portion first, and I'm going to be reusing the pattern that I used last week, but if you don't have one, you can use any mini skirt pattern, just shorten it, and I'll also link a free one down below if you don't have one. Here is the pattern for the front of my skirt, and here it is cut out of the fabric. This piece was cut on fold and I also ironed on some lightweight fusible interfacing to give the linen a little more structure. Now I'll go ahead and transfer and sew on the darts and you should have something that looks like this. Moving on to the back. Here is my pattern piece and here it is cut out of the fabric. Just like the front, I've cut this on fold and used fusible interfacing. This time I won't be sewing the darts because I plan to elasticize the back instead. Now I'll place my pieces right sides facing and I'll sew together along this side seam but only sew the bottom section of this side seam together, leaving the top open for my zipper. Here is what the skirt should look like now with this section of the side seam left open. I want to add a pleated section to the bottom of my skirt so I'm just measuring the width of the hem and for me that measurement is 41 inches. Now I'm going to take that measurement which for me is 41 inches and I'm going to multiply that by 3 which is 123 inches and that is the length of fabric that I'll need for this pleated section. So slight little hiccup and I'm going to have to change my original design a little bit. I've been cutting out strips of fabric to sew together to potentially get that 123 inches in length but there's just no way. I just don't have enough fabric for that. So I'm going to have to change my plan a little bit. And instead of doing pleats, I'm going to do gathers instead. And it's not what I wanted, but it's okay because that's just how thrift flips go sometimes. And we're just going to go with it. From the skirt portion of the original dress, I cut out as many long strips of fabric as I could. And they are all five and a half inches tall. Now I'll sew all these pieces together. We are really going with the flow for this project because change of plans again. So I just sewed all of the strips of fabric together and this loop is so long, long enough, I think, for me to try the pleats. And I really want to go for it because my heart is set on it. So I'm just going to try and hope that it works out. Here are all of the pieces sewn together in a loop. I've gone ahead and hemmed the bottom and now I'm just making sure that everything is laying nice and flat. Using my ruler and air erasable marker, I make marks one inch apart along the top and I'll do the same along the bottom as well. To create the pleats, I'm folding the fabric at the third mark and connecting that to the first mark. Each pleat is going to be three layers and that's why this long piece needed to be three times longer than the hem of the skirt. We'll repeat this process again for the next pleat. Here is the first mark and here is the third. Again, I'm folding at the third mark and then connecting that to the first mark and pinning in place. I'm going to repeat this until the entire length of the piece is completely pleated and this is what it should look like. I actually didn't have enough pins to completely pleat the piece so I'll be working in sections. Now I'm using my iron to press the pleats in place. As you can tell from my costume change, it is a new day. Yesterday, I definitely struggled a little bit. I'm a little ashamed to admit how long it took me to complete this pleating process and things were just not going well for me because then I went to iron the piece and I didn't realize that my iron was dirty so I got this little stain on it. So I had to wash it and there's still little remnants of the stain but it's so much better than it was before. But this pleated piece is now ready and let's finish this dress. To help hold the pleats in place, I've sewn a basting stitch along the top and bottom which I will remove later when the dress is finished. I'm pinning this pleated section right sides facing to the bottom of my skirt and I'll sew to secure. Here is what the skirt should look like with both pieces sewn together. I've also top stitched right above the seam that joins the two pieces, making sure to also catch the seam allowance. I am so happy that I decided to do the pleats instead of the gathers because it turned out so cute and I'm so excited to finish the rest of this dress now. To make the pattern for my top, I'm going to be using this free pattern from Mood Fabrics and I'll link that down below if you want to check that out. I'll be making some minor modifications to the original pattern, but I'll show you exactly how I do that. 
I personally don't like cutting out my original pattern, so I've traced out the size 2 pattern onto some parchment paper. This pattern has a dart at the bust and waist, and I'm going to change that so I traced it out again onto some brown paper. In the middle of both darts, I've drawn a line and then cut along that line making sure not to cut all the way to the point where the two lines meet. Now I can shift the section over, closing up the bust dart and widening the waist dart. I'm careful to line up both points of the original bust darts so that they meet and then secure that with some tape. Now I'm just folding this piece under to create a straight side seam. Here is the original collar from the floral dress and these pins indicate the placement of the shoulder seams of my bodice. Using the collar as a guide, I line up the pins with my shoulder seam of my pattern piece. I'm letting this center part hang over just a little bit to account for seam allowance when sewing later. Now I just trace out this shape creating my new neckline. Go ahead and cut this out and next, I want to make sure that the placement of the dart will line up with the dart on the front of the skirt. To do this, I'm taping a piece of scrap paper to this cutout of my pattern piece. Then, using my skirt pattern as a guide, I mark the placement of my darts. I draw my new dart, cleaned up the section, and cut off the extra paper along the bottom. I also want my arm side to be slightly bigger, so I'm lowering the side seam by about 1 inch and drafting a new curve. Cut this out and here is my modified front bodice pattern. Here is my parchment paper tracing of the back bodice pattern and again I've cut out another piece on brown paper so I can make my modifications. This time I fold the collar in half and line it up with the center back and shoulder seam. I trace the shape of the collar and then cut out the new neckline. Again, I lower the armhole and cut that out as well. To determine the length of my back pattern piece, I place my front pattern piece on top of it along the side seam and make a mark. Now I'm just folding the extra length under and here is my back bodice pattern. I won't be adding the dart in the back since it will be elasticized. Here is the front bodice piece of the original dress. I was planning on cutting this unfold, but as you can see here, that's just not going to work with my pattern piece. So I'm going to shift it over and cut two pieces that will be sewn together along the center front. I'll cut out both my front pieces, making sure to add a half inch seam allowance to the center front. I've sewn my front pieces together and I've also gone ahead and sewn the darts, but at this point I decided I didn't like the way that they looked, so I'm going to seam rip them open and I'll gather the section here later instead. Here is my front piece with the darts removed and I'm placing my back piece that I've already cut out right sides facing. I'll sew them together along the shoulder seam and this side seam, but for this side I'll only sew the top section together, leaving the rest open for the zipper. Then I put on the top and played around with the placement of the collar. I realized I could lower the neckline slightly, so using the collar as a guide, I mark out the new neckline with my air erasable marker. Here is the top with the adjusted neckline and now I'm just finding the center back and marking that with a pin. I find the center point of my collar, then I place the right side of the collar to the wrong side of the top and pin in place. Continue to pin the rest of the collar to the top and I'll sew to secure. I've sewn the collar on and now I'm turning the top to the right side and it should look something like this. To keep everything in place, I'm going to understitch the seam allowance to the top and this is what it should look like now. I'm not too happy with the center section because the seam allowance is visible, so I'm going to cover it with a faux buttonhole placard. I fold it and press the raw edges of this strip under and I'm placing it along the center front and I'll sew along both sides and the top securing it in place. Here is what it should look like and now it's time to add the sleeves. This is the original sleeve of the linen dress and this is the original sleeve cuff of the floral dress. I'm going to start by sewing a basting stitch along the hem of the sleeve. Using the cuff as a guide, I'll gather the sleeve by pulling on the loose end of the basting stitch. Now that they both match, I'm just spacing out the gathers evenly. This cuff was basically folded in half with this side of the seam allowance being narrow and it being much wider on the other side. I'm placing the side with the narrow seam allowance right side spacing to the wrong side of the sleeve and pinning in place. I've gone ahead and pinned all the way around and I'll sew them together and this is what it should look like. Then I turn the sleeve over to the right side and I'm folding the cuff in half covering all of the raw edges. I'll top stitch all the way around making sure to leave a 1 inch gap. Now I'm going to insert this 3 quarters of an inch elastic and using a safety pin, I feed it through the channel. Sew both ends together with a zigzag stitch and then top stitch the rest of the gap closed. Finally, before sewing the sleeve to the top, I'll sew a basting stitch from here to here and this is what the completed sleeve should look like. I've gone ahead and pinned most of my sleeve to my top making sure that the seam of the sleeve lines up with the side seam. To attach the rest of the sleeve, I'll pull on the loose basting stitch and gather until the sleeve cap curve matches the arm side and pin the rest of the sleeve in place. Sew together and this is what it should look like now. Repeat this for the other side and here is the top with both sleeves sewn on. At this point, I was just playing around with the design and decided the top would look kind of cute with these pleats so I pinned them in place. Here is what they look like sewn on and I made sure that the placement of the pleats would line up with the darts on the skirt. I am so sorry that I keep changing my mind between this pleats and gathers thing, but I think that the theme of this upcycle is that we just go with it and hope for the best. 
For the waistband, I cut out a shorter strip of fabric that matches the front of the skirt and a longer one that matches the back of the skirt. Now I'll sew them together and I also cut out two other identical pieces. Here are both pieces and they are exactly the same but to make things less confusing, I'll call one the waistband and the other the lining. I take the waistband and pin it right sides facing to the bottom of my top. Then I'll take the lining and place it right sides to the wrong sides of the top and pin. This is what it should look like pinned all the way around. So to secure and this is what it should look like now. As you can see here, I've given it a good press and the top is sandwiched between the waistband and the lining. Now I'm pinning the skirt right sides facing to just the waistband, don't worry about the lining for now. Sew together and this is what it should look like with the lining not attached to the skirt yet. Now starting with the back of the dress, I'm going to stitch in the ditch until just a little bit past the side seam. This has created a channel for me to insert my 3 quarters of an inch elastic. Now I'm securing the elastic in place by sewing both ends to the waistband and this is what the back should look like now. I'll go ahead and stitch in the ditch in the front, securing the rest of the lining to the dress. I am so close to finishing this dress but I needed to take a short little daisy break. Now that the top and skirt are sewn together, it's time to sew in the invisible zipper and this dress is almost done. To finish this dress, I'm going to sew a few buttons to the front. So initially my plan was to make some buttons with the fabric from the green skirt, but then I realized I had these pearl buttons in my stash, so I'm going to use these instead. And technically this isn't a challenge video, so I don't really have to use all three items. I decided to sew on four buttons to the front of my dress, making sure I spaced them out evenly, and the last step is to remove the basting stitch along the hem, and this dress is finally complete. This upcycle was definitely a little bit stressful, but look how cute this dress turned out. I had a little bit of fabric left over, and you guys all know I can be a little bit extra sometimes, so I made Daisy a little version of this dress as well. I even added this fake collar detail so that we would match perfectly, and I think this may be the cutest dress I've ever made her, and I'm so excited to see how adorable she looks in this. I know this is so extra, but I honestly can't get over how cute these dresses look together. Here is the dress on, and I actually sent this clip to Addie, and here's what she thought. Tiffany! Oh my gosh, the collar? These pleats? Those pleats are gorgeous. The fit of this is insane. The dog. You made a dress for your dog. I am speechless. Oh my gosh, I was floored with the first dress that you made out of this fabric. The collar on this, the puff sleeve, those buttons. This is absolutely insane. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna watch it again because I cannot get over this. You are so talented. Oh my gosh. <gasps> absolutely incredible. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Let me know what you think of this dress in the comments below. It's not normally my style, but I'm really happy with how it turned out and I'm so excited to wear it out. If you wanna see more photos of this dress, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Little Toe. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching.